Thank you for taking the time to listen to this recording of our procurement reform engagement session. I appreciate that these are difficult times and that you are all exceptionally busy, but it's very important to us and our ministers that your views are sought before any decisions are made on procurement reform in Wales. Our main focus is not to discuss in depth the content of the UK's Green Paper. It is aimed to help us understand what your views and opinions are on procurement in Wales. We don't want to make any assumptions. In this presentation, we will provide the context for considering procurement reform in Wales and a high level overview of some of the UK government's Green Paper proposals. We will also look at the current procurement landscape in Wales, which will include an overview of the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, Welsh Procurement Policy Statement, Planned Social Partnership Bill, and EU exit and economic recovery from COVID-19. We will also consider what our next steps are going to be. During the live events, we considered questions posted in the chat bar. For those who are listening to this recorded version, the procurement reform team's mail address is included at the end of the presentation, so you won't miss out on the opportunity to raise questions. We have taken note of all questions and a frequently asked questions document is being developed and will be shared with our stakeholders via Cell to Wales. To ensure that we capture as many opinions as possible, we will be issuing an engagement survey to invite your views on procurement reform in Wales. We encourage you to submit your feedback using this survey to ensure that your views are considered. More information regarding this will be included at the end of the session. In December 2020, the UK government published a green paper and consultation on transforming public procurement. Procurement for Welsh public bodies is not reserved and the Senate can legislate in relation to procurement. When we say reserved, we mean that procurement is largely devolved. Our Welsh ministers therefore need to understand how current procurement regulations could be amended to maximise their impact on the implementation of Welsh Government's policy ambitions and priorities. The purpose of these engagement sessions is to provide you with an opportunity to feed in your views so that we can better inform our ministers of stakeholder opinion. Welsh ministers will make a formal decision on a way forward for procurement reform in March 2021, once stakeholder feedback has been gathered and analysed. In terms of the context of EU exit, following the end of the transition period, public procurement regulations continue to operate in broadly the same way as they were prior to leaving the European Union. The UK's departure from the European Union does however provide Welsh ministers with an opportunity to reform the current procurement regulations. From January 2021, the United Kingdom joined the World Trade Organization's Agreement on Government Procurement, commonly referred to as GPA. The UK joined as an independent member guaranteeing access for British businesses to an estimated £1.3 trillion in overseas public procurement markets. It is important to note that any procurement reform will have to comply with the GPA and procurement provisions set out in free trade agreements. I touched on the Government Procurement Agreement or GPA in the previous slides. The fundamental aim of the GPA is to mutually open government procurement markets among its parties. The text of the agreement establishes rules requiring that open, fair and transparent conditions of competition be ensured in government procurement. The GPA is shorter than the EU directives and less prescriptive on processes. There are only three procedures described, open tendering, selected tendering and limited tendering, as opposed to the seven procedures listed in the existing regulations. It also encourages electronic means in procurement. The GPA applies to a narrower range of procurements than the directives. For example, procurements subject to the light touch regime are not subject to the GPA. 
The current procurement landscape in Wales includes the following. The Wellbeing of Future Generations of Wales Act, Welsh Procurement Policy Statement, Draft Social Partnership Bill, EU Exit and Economic Recovery from COVID-19. For those who may not be familiar with the current procurement landscape in Wales, we will provide an overview of each of these points in the following slides. In terms of the Wellbeing of Future Generations of Wales Act, the seven national wellbeing goals represent a common vision for the future of Wales. Bodies that come under the Act have a legal obligation to maximise their contribution to each of the wellbeing goals. Procurement is one of the corporate areas for change in the Act's statutory guidance. The guidance states that public bodies should comply with their existing legal obligations in relation to procurement, and public bodies should also apply the Wales Procurement Policy Statement, which we will touch upon next. The Welsh Procurement Policy Statement sets out the strategic vision for public sector procurement in Wales. Stakeholder feedback is currently being sought on a draft version of the new WPPS. The draft WPPS principles include commitments to fair work, foundation and circular economy, carbon reduction and more. Once the new WPPS is published in the spring 2021, Welsh Government will develop an action plan detailing how the Welsh Government will take the new WPPS principles forward. In terms of the draft social partnership bill, the intention is that the draft bill is published for consultation to be concluded prior to the pre-election period. And this will be an opportunity for all stakeholders to comment on the proposed legislation. It will be for the new administration to decide how to take the draft legislation forward. Sorry. The focus of the legislation is on greater transparency and focus on outcomes, particularly in relation to social value with fair work at the heart of that. The aims are also to improve the focus on contract management and due diligence in supply chains and to improve accountability. The draft bill includes mechanisms for overseeing the application of these duties through a procurement subgroup of a social partnership council and strengthen provisions for addressing concerns raised about procurement and contract management. As discussed in previous slides, the UK's exit from the European Union provides an opportunity for Welsh ministers to reform current regulations. Both the EU exit and COVID-19 will impact on the way that procurement reform is taken forward in Wales. We will also need to consider how procurement legislation could assist in helping Wales's economic recovery post COVID-19. In the context of COVID-19, EU exit and the Welsh landscape generally, we have an opportunity to ensure that procurement in Wales is suitably equipped for the challenges of the 21st century. Some rhetorical questions for the purposes of this briefing are how could procurement reform help Wales? From your perspective, what are the critical issues linked to the current procurement regulations that need to be addressed in Wales? What key principles should underpin any potential new procurement legislation for Wales? You will have an opportunity to respond to questions such as these in our survey, which will be available to participants following these engagement sessions. If new procurement legislation is put in place in Wales, this will need to be underpinned with a programme of guidance and training for users. In terms of the proposals within the UK government's Green Paper on transforming public procurement, these proposals do not apply to Welsh public bodies, but you are welcome to respond to the UK government's consultation. We would ask that if you do respond to the UK government's consultation directly, that you please copy us into any responses you send, as this will also help us inform ministers regarding your views. Alternatively, you can send your response directly to us only. An email address will be provided later in the presentation. Welsh Ministers will need to make a formal decision on procurement reform in Wales by early March 2021.
We have identified three key areas from the UK government's green paper that we feel could impact Wales. They are the light touch regime, the DPS plus and open frameworks. These are not exhaustive and we will ask in our survey for your views on other areas that you feel could impact Wales. The types of services covered by the current light touch regime include social, health, education and other services. They are currently listed in Schedule 3 of the Public Contract Regulations 2015 and have a lighter set of procurement rules. They are commonly known as LTR. If you do if you do want to consider this in more detail, the rules of the procedure governing the light touch regime are set out in regulations 74 to 76 of the public contract regulations. With regard to the government procurement agreement referred to previously, light touch regime procurements are not listed in the GPA and are therefore not subject to it. And with regard to the UK government's green paper, the light touch regime is covered in paragraph 96. UK government proposes removing the light touch regime as a distinct method of awarding contracts. This would involve changing the threshold for light touch regime procurements to the same as other services. As part of our survey, we will be asking you to consider if the UK government's proposal on the light touch regime would work for Wales and what advantages or disadvantages there could be for Wales. The questions included in our survey are intended to encourage wider thinking about what methods are currently available and those being proposed by the UK government. A further example is the commercial tool within Chapter 5 of the Green Paper. The UK government is proposing the introduction of a Dynamic Purchasing System Plus. This is a new system that may be used for all types of procurement, not just commonly used goods and services. It would have to remain continuously open with a live advertising notice on find a tender service to enable new suppliers to apply at any time. Any supplier who then met the conditions for participating would have to be admitted to the DPS plus. The number of suppliers could not be limited. It will not need to have a maximum duration, but any means to terminate the list would have to be detailed in the original advertised notice. Procurement could then be undertaken within a DPS plus using the UK's government's newly proposed competitive flexible procedure. This new procedure would have minimal detailed rules, only those needed to comply with the proposed principles of public procurement and the GPA. This procedure would be similar to the existing light touch regime that I referred to earlier. This new procedure would replace five of the existing procedures, those being restricted, competitive dialogue, competitive procedure with negotiation, innovation partnerships and design contests. We will be seeking your views on whether you feel that the proposed UK changes to the current DPS would bring any benefit to you as a buying organisation or supplier. A key change proposed in the UK government's green paper is the introduction of a new open framework with multiple joining points and a maximum term of eight years. This would allow any supplier to submit a bid to join the framework at predetermined points. If the contracting organisation wished to have a framework with a duration of longer than the traditional four year period, the framework would have to be opened at least once after the third year for new entrants to join. The contracting authority would need to advertise the reopening of the framework in a notice and assess new applicants by applying the same requirements and evaluation criteria used when the framework agreement was originally awarded. The contracting authority would be able to open the framework up as many times as they wished during its term, as long as this was stated in the call for competition. Suppliers already on the framework would also be given the opportunity of remaining on it based on their original bid or by submitting an updated bid. Contracting authorities would still be able to limit the number of suppliers on a framework at any one time, but if they did, they would have to re-evaluate the bids of suppliers already on the framework if those suppliers decided not to submit an updated bid. 
This would avoid the original suppliers from blocking access to new suppliers. I would suggest that you consider more fully the content within Chapter 5 of the Green Paper before responding to our survey. We will be seeking your views on whether or not the proposed changes contain contained within the UK Government's Green Paper would be a good approach for Wales. We will also be interested in your opinion as to whether you feel framework agreements are needed in Wales. And if you do not believe that frameworks are needed, what alternative approaches do you feel would be more appropriate? As I've already stated, questions raised during these events will be considered and a frequently asked questions document will be developed and shared with our stakeholders. If you have any questions following this recorded session, please email the procurement reform team at procurementreformteam at gov.wales. To ensure that we capture as many views as possible, we will be issuing a link to an engagement survey that will invite your views on procurement reform in Wales and ask that it be completed by 12th of February 2021. You are welcome to complete the full survey or only the areas that are of interest to you. We do appreciate how busy you are, but your opinions are very important to us. We therefore encourage you to respond to the survey and ask that you also share a copy of your, your response to the UK government's consultation on the Green Paper. A copy of your response to the Green Paper can be forwarded to the Procurement Reform Team's email address included in this slide. All feedback received will be collated and analysed and will be used to brief Welsh Ministers regarding procurement reform in Wales. Thank you for taking the time to listen.